Hi, I'm Mari. And I'm Florian. And I'm here, here to talk to you about how to get interactive putting a shell or a desktop right into your Django app. So what are we talking about here? How about we just show you? What you see on your screen right now is a platform that we run, City Cloud Academy. It's a learning management system based on Open edX, which itself is a big set of Django applications that could really be a DjangoCon talk or, or tutorial all on its own. And in fact, probably the only reason why this is the only Open edX talk in the conference that we know of is that Open edX had its own annual conference just last week. So we run this learning platform to teach people complex technology like Ceph, Kubernetes, OpenStack, Terraform, that sort of thing. And we hope you agree with us that most people tend to learn best by doing. So you don't want to just read about those things or watch someone else do them. You, of course, want to do them yourself. And because all of those technologies are inherently distributed, you want to learn them on distributed systems, on real platforms like a lab that your company might otherwise make available in hardware. But of course, a hardware lab is really expensive and it's usually a, well, it's a finite resource. It's also usually a scarce resource. It's frequently overbooked and sometimes it's outright inaccessible, such as when everyone is working from home in the middle of a pandemic. So in comes cloud technology. And as it happens, the two of us work for a cloud company. So that comes in handy for us, but that's really of secondary importance to what we're about to show you, as you'll see in a moment. So what's happening here is that we open up a page on the learning management system, the LMS. Whenever we talk about an LMS in this talk, it's always a learning management system. And it contains a little magic window, this interactive terminal. And that window is your entry point to your own little lab. So in this case here, what you see is the learner is dropping into a terminal. Uh, they look around a bit. And then ultimately they decide that they're about to develop and compile something on this lab environment. So they start by installing the build essential meta package on this Ubuntu box. And without the learner knowing it, when they first hit this page, the LMS made an API call to the cloud platform on their behalf. It spun up in a stack, a lab environment that could be, that can be arbitrarily complex. In this case, it's just one Ubuntu machine, but it could be five, it could be 10, it could be three that each run 50 containers, whatever. And then it presents you with this terminal right there in your browser. And this terminal is of course, fully interactive and you can use it just like your favorite terminal emulator on your laptop or workstation. And as you can see in the next lab that we're progressing to here, that terminal need be a boring old text terminal. It can be a full blown desktop as well. So in this case, what you see is an XFCE4 desktop on Zubuntu. It could be anything, it could be GNOME, it could be KDE, it could be LXDE, whatever. And what we'll do here just to show you that yes, this is indeed a fully interactive system is we open LibreOffice Writer and we create some text in it, as you can see here in this little screencast. But today we're not going to talk about all of the fun little details of how the interaction with this cloud platform works or how the lab stacks spin up or how they automatically go to sleep when you don't need them and how they magically wake up when you come back to them because we've already done a bunch of talks on that. They're on the internet. We have YouTube links for them at the end of the talk and you can try this out yourself on our platform as well. We have links in the chat for that very purpose right now. Today, what we're instead going to focus on what we're zooming in on is precisely how this entry point works, how exactly you can make a fully interactive terminal or desktop session pop up in someone's browser using Django, of course. Now, the technology that this all revolves around is Apache Guacamole, and we're going to do a bit of a refresher on Guacamole terms and technology here. If you're not familiar with Guacamole at all, this would be a nice little introduction to it. If you already know guacamole, like I said, it's a bit of a refresher. But from here on out, we're assuming two things. One, you're a learner on our platform. You've opened a page in a course that contains a lab and that lab has successfully spun up a random box somewhere in the cloud, like you just saw. So there is something for us to work with. There is an environment that we can work with. And two, we're able to connect to an IP address, IPv4, IPv6, that doesn't matter that's been exposed on that box. And we can connect to two TCP ports, one for secure shell, usually that's port 22, and one for RDP, usually that's port 3389. Now we could also be using VNC, but 
the same principle would apply. So we'll just stick with SSH and RDP for now to keep things simple. And also because RDP is a protocol that works for both Windows and for Linux targets. So one natively on Windows, RDP is available natively. Um, and on the other, on Linux, it's available via XRDP or GNOME Remote Desktop. All right, now, the first thing that we'll look at is the Guacamole server, or GuacD. Uh, now, this is a server binary that's written in C, so it's very fast and efficient, and it connects to upstream SSH or RDP, or BNC or whatever services using protocol plugins. Now, we should note here that to the services running on your box, the SSH or RDP daemon running on your box, the GuacD server acts very much as an SSH or RDP client. We mention that because the terminology easily gets confusing, so please stay with us here. It's going to get a little worse before it gets better. The GuacD server's job is then to take all of these various upstream protocols and translate them into a unified event stream using what's called the Guacamole protocol. And the idea is that whatever comes down the pipe, whether it's SSH or VNC or RDP or whatever, Everything is always translated into this one event stream, and that's always the Guacamole protocol, or that you always use as the Guacamole protocol. But your browser, of course, doesn't speak the Guacamole protocol, right? It speaks HTTP, HTTPS, WebSockets, and perhaps a few other protocols, but certainly not the Guacamole protocol. So we need another translation engine to make this happen, to display this stuff in your browser. And here is where, unfortunately, the naming gets really confusing because in Guacamole's documentation, this thing is called the Guacamole client, even though it's very much a server to your browser, right? But the naming is correct in so far as it is indeed the client part of the communication between two endpoints that speak the Guacamole protocol the other endpoint being the GuacD server. So it is confusing, but arguably it's correct in the naming. So the Guacamole client, that's the thing that speaks the Guacamole protocol on one end to the GuacD server and WebSockets on the other to your browser. And then to complete the picture, you've got some JavaScript on the browser running in the, in the browser window that's responsible for rendering what it gets from the WebSocket stream. So this is the general architecture that we're talking about random service somewhere in the cloud, guacamole server, guacamole client, and then uh, your, your own web browser with its JavaScript engine that can render the whole thing. So please keep this picture in mind. We'll come back to it a few more times in the talk. Now, the guacamole client, which those of you who already know guacamole uh, will be most familiar with, is a Java servlet application. It's a remote desktop manager. And what most of the time what people do is they will deploy GuacD and they will deploy the Guacamole servlet application, usually on the same server. They can do that either natively or via Docker containers. And what you get this way is a nice remote desktop manager. And the thing that's running here is an admittedly really dated version of Guacamole that's being showcased in this little video that you can find on the Guacamole website, where you can see how you can connect from that Java servlet remote desktop manager application to some Windows hosts and Linux hosts and anything else that speaks one of the protocols that GuacD can understand that it has protocol plugins for. So again, this is sort of the general architecture. You've got the Guacamole server, you've got the Guacamole client, that's usually this Java servlet application running in Apache Tomcat and then your browser that consumes the whole thing. And if you don't need the whole standard Guacamole remote desktop manager, and you want to instead incorporate Guacamole functionality into your own application, the developers give you a nice how-to for how to build your own. Again, this is assuming that you want to write the whole application in Java as a Java servlet application that you can then deploy as a WAR file. But what if you actually don't want to take that one sort of detour through Java? For example, what if you already have some data in your Django models that you can nicely access via the Django ORM that you somehow want to make accessible to Guacamole and then steer the whole Guacamole flow from Django? Now, let me give you a simple example. You might be generating one-time SSH keys for connecting your labs. So SSH keys that you create when you spin up a new lab and you delete when you throw the lab away. So every key is always for one lab only and you're never reusing your keys. And now you want to store that data in Django somewhere. So 
say you've got two file fields pointing to the private and public key files. And of course, when you tear the lab down, you're going to throw everything away. But while the lab is alive, you want to be able to grab that data from your database and create a guacamole connection. Now, what you could do, sticking to the original architecture, the original recommended architecture, is you could do some really bad data mangling, copy all that data from your Django model into a database that the Java application could read from, but that gets ugly really quickly. So you don't really want to do that. So instead, what if you wanted to do this and be able to bypass the Java servlet bits altogether? And there can be a number of reasons for this. Maybe you don't want to add a Java runtime environment and servlet container to your development chain, right? Or maybe you're a pure Python shop and you simply don't have Java development capacity available on your team. Or maybe you just really, really like using Django. So what if you could write a full-blown guacamole client in Python using Django that has access to everything that's in your data model and you can just plug into your Django deployment pipeline? Well, it turns out you can do exactly that. So, enter a pure Python guacamole client, Py guacamole. Now, what the heck is that? Well, as you heard just a moment ago, we need a client that can talk to the guacamole server, guacd on one end, and to the browser on the other end. So, Py guacamole is a Python library that gives us this client for communicating with guacd and we'll be looking into how to use it in just a bit. But before we do, what else do we need? We also need the browser to talk to this client. We want to draw a terminal or a desktop window to the browser, and we want to be able to interact with it, right? So we need to connect to this client in a way that allows bidirectional communications, and for that, we'll be using WebSockets. Now, as all of you probably know, to handle any other protocols aside from HTTP in a Django project, we'll need to use channels. And channels is built on ASCII or a synchronous server gateway interface that allows multiple protocols. And the basic unit of channels code is a consumer and that's what we need. So we'll be showing you the consumer of our application. All right, so let's look at the code. Let's start with the view. Our project, the Hastexa Xplug, is a plugin to open edX's edX platform. So the view will be rendered as a part of what we call a unit page. So our view will be this, the student view in Hastexa.py. And just to show you really quick, this is where we render the main template and load the necessary JavaScript files. And here you can see the JavaScript file where we initialize the JavaScript Guacamole client. Now, this works exactly as it would with a Java servlet, so we don't need to look into this anymore now. You can find the necessary information in Guacamole documentation, or you're always most welcome to come see the code in our project, which is open source. Now, let's move on to the most important part, the consumer.py file. Since we're using WebSockets here, and this communication runs in an asynchronous manner, we are implementing the async WebSocket consumer from channels, and we are calling it the Guacamole WebSocket consumer. So two things we need to define here, a client and a task. On WebSocket Connect, we are going to initialize the Guacamole client and this is where Py Guacamole comes in. We import the client here and we initialize the client here. For our target stack to what we want to connect to, we get the information from the database. So using database sync to async from channels.p, we can get the stack objects by calling stack objects get as you can see here in our getStack method. Now back to the Guacamole client, we need to provide the host name and the port for GuacD, and then we can call handshake. So let's go over the parameters for this. We need to provide the protocol uh, for the connection with the target 
In our case, this would be either SSH or RDP. We need to pass the hostname, port, username, password, and private key for the target. We can customize the window we draw to the uh, browser by passing the width and height in here in pixels. Uh, we have some additional customization options here, like color scheme, font name, font size. There are more options for customization, and you can see them in uh, Guacamole documentation. Right, so now that we are connecting to the client, uh, we are going to create a task, open the communication, and accept the connection. When we open the connection here, we start receiving data from the Guacamole client, and if we get something, we send it to the WebSocket. Everything we receive from the WebSocket in here, we send to the Guacamole client. For example, what uh, one will type into a terminal window in the browser, we will pass to the Guacamole client here as a key event. We have a use case where we want to display a terminal window in a read-only mode. So this is what you see here. When switched on, we just block, or well, ignore to be more exact, uh, all mouse and key events. And the last thing we do here is cancel the task and close the connection when the WebSocket gets disconnected. And that is all we need for the consumer, less than a hundred lines of code. What we also need to do is define the application in routing.py and point the WebSocket to our Guacamole WebSocket consumer. In settings.py, amongst other things, we need to point our ASCII application to the application we define in routing.py. Also note that we need to add channels to the list of installed apps. Okay, so now we've seen the code, but how do we run it? Well, there's an official ASCII HTTP WebSocket server called Daphne, which is maintained by the Channels project. We really have no reason not to use it and look for other options, which there are. So for us, we're using Daphne, but in order to scale the number of processes, we are running it with Supervisor D. There are great examples in the channels documentation on how to do this, and I'd like to show you that real quick. So this is an example setup on how to run Daphne with Supervisor D. As you can see, here's an example configuration file. This is what we also use for reference. And what you need to do here mainly is to define your application. So for us, this would be Hashtag so Guacamole Client Routing Application. And what follows is an example on how to set up Nginx to point traffic to your Daphne application. Now, finally, how does this all work together? You may have noticed that we talked about running one application, OpenEdXS LMS, that's all classic HTTP and Django and G-Unicorn and WSGI. And we run that together with another, the Guacamole client, which runs with WebSockets, Async Django, Channels, Daphne, and ASCII. And what we do here is something that's ubiquitous in OpenEdX all over the place, which is to run everything behind Nginx. The OpenEdX has a bunch of different services besides the LMS, such as the OpenEdX Studio, which is a course authoring tool, a certificate verification service, and many others. And to unify things like the SSL certificate management, and even to have one IP address for all services, we just throw everything behind Nginx. So to sum it all up, let's follow the track of how an RDP or SSH session ends up in an interactive browser window one more time. RDP traffic originates with the upstream server anywhere in the world. GuacD receives that traffic, translates it into a generic event stream and encodes it in the Guacamole protocol. This happens in a C binary. A Guacamole client running on the same server as GuacD takes that event stream and translates it into a WebSocket stream. This is an async Django app 
Running in Daphne with ASCII using Pi Guacamole. Nginx proxies the WebSocket stream into a URL path hierarchy shared with other open edX services, themselves synchronous Django apps running in GUnicorn with WSGI. Your browser receives the mixed HTTP WebSocket content from Nginx. One of the things your browser receives is the statically served Guacamole web client JavaScript library. Your browser takes that library and uses it to interpret the WebSocket stream and displays it in your browser window. Now you hit a key or click the window in your browser. A JavaScript event listener notices the key strike or pointer click. It sends a WebSocket request up to Nginx. Nginx proxies that event to the ASCII listener exposed by Daphne. The listener takes the WebSocket event and translates it into a Guacamole protocol event. Pi Guacamole passes the event on to GuacD. GuacD translates it into an RDP event. GuacD's RDP client library, linked to FreeRDP2, sends the RDP event on to the upstream server. The server processes the event, sends an update back down the wire. And that's how you put a desktop or a terminal session in any browser with Django. We finished with some links and references to the building blocks of the architecture that's discussed in this talk. Uh, obviously with huge thanks to all of their developers and contributors. Uh, Pi Guacamole is an MIT licensed guacamole client library. We use it heavily in the Hastexo X block, which is a plugin to OpenEdX, itself a massively distributed learning platform that anyone can operate. Both the uh, X block and OpenEdX itself are licensed under the Afero GPL. And of course, there's also Apache Guacamole itself, which surprise, surprise, is naturally Apache licensed. And of that, we only use the server component. And finally, you can find this deck on GitHub under a Creative Commons license as well. And that's our talk. Thanks for watching. And, and now, now we're here to take any other questions, questions in, in the, the chat. chat.